Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards, and today we're back. I mean, I just got this yesterday. Uh, it, yes, it's taken me a little to get used to. I'm, I think I'm about over the hump, but not that it doesn't sound good stock. It's 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 perfect, especially if I was working in an office environment. Um, this keyboard would just, I mean, it's so nice and quiet. I mean, you get the click, but I want to see if I can get more life out of the sound, out of the, you know, the tone. The, the, I want to see if I can get a better acoustic profile out of this keyboard because I love how it looks and I just think it could sound much better, especially just given the girth of the body, uh, the fact that it has either one or two batteries um, inside of it. I'm going to guess two because that's what Fucker did with the uh, IK75. Uh, and I do believe that these are two separate PCBs as well. But I was thinking just the standard mods, go through it and see if I can do anything different. I'm also gonna change out the switches. I mean, this switch is there. Um, I, I, it's about the only NK, NK switch I can say I like is the NK cream, not the box cream, but the original cream. Um, other than that, I really, like if you were to ask me to pick another kale switch. Hmm. So I got these, but um, what, what I'm going to do is go ahead and change them out. There was two in the box as a sample, uh, but it's some Fecker Holy Pandas that I've got that I'm going to put them in there. And um, this is a great little tactile switch that has some nice snaps so we can increase the volume because I mean, I want to get some volume out of this keyboard. Um, not looking for it to be loud and clacky. But looking to get more of a sound profile than the muted profile it currently has. So, first things first, we take off the knob. Let's make sure not to use that. Next thing, I do believe from what I've seen, unless they've got screws under here, this should be, yeah, that's what I thought. This is clip, clip mounted. So, best to take, don't use a metal tool when uh, if you're doing this. Please avoid using a metal tool because uh, there's a good chance you can break uh, the clips or the keyboard itself. And even if you're using plastic, try not to use too much force. Uh, I mean, these clips aren't necessarily, I mean, they're not gentle, like, like you know, they're going to break on a bit of a wind, but, you know, they have their tolerances. So, I usually just try to go around the perimeter. Try not to fight with the ones that want to fight with me because some just like to fight and sometimes part of the ones that have popped up pop back in. So, oh, there we go. But eventually you should start getting enough apart. As long as, like I said, don't fight with it, just work with it. We're getting there. Got those. Oh, there we go. Got those and we just need this side. Got up here. Oh yeah! Look at here. We got a lot going on. This is a, uh, like I said, it looks like a split PCB. I want to trying to figure out where to start. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just sitting in there. Nice. And as you can see, it's it's a split PCB. It has um, cables connecting it, so. That's one thing. We're going to have to want to be real fragile here. Um, these JST cables, I've dealt with smaller, but it's just best not to take a chance. Um, we'll go ahead and disconnect this from the case. Oop, this little guy's in there. Um, using just enough force to what I, I like to just rock them back and forth little by little using a tool I'm always afraid I'm gonna break it I have broken a couple of them but they still work but that's not that's not necessarily um, a good thing all right well, we're out so now let's see let's see what we got here so obviously you want to be very careful I'm gonna look at these I don't think I want to disconnect 
I mean, I can work those JSTs back, but honestly, I could mess it up too. So I'm just going to leave that be for a second. What do we have here? Whoa! That's a thick puppy. Some parts of this are, I mean, that's close to an inch. That's three quarters of an inch, maybe. Wow. So that's a, um, that's a huge puppy, and that's obviously, I mean, it's different, but it's interesting that it has a, um, basically gasket pads in the middle right here. Uh, there's the magnet for the um, receiver. That's one thing I did find with the receiver. I don't know if it's just this unit, but it's too deep in there. Like, I mean, I literally have to use a spudger to get it out. Now, granted, I don't use the wireless, so there's that. Now, I could disconnect the batteries, but I'm not going to do that. Right now, I, just, I, I don't want to mess with the functionality of it. I want to see what can I put down here in the bottom to replace this because I mean don't get me wrong this is nice but I think it's just way too thick because it's literally not giving it's probably preventing a little bit more of a flex that it could have but I think it's what's creating all that muteness so now obviously we want to you know not have hollowness and plastic and rattliness so we need to find something to put in there to where and we can still have these studs because that, let me see how that sits in there, like, like that, like that. Those socks want to come loose, but, um, I mean, there's the hole where, I mean, I guess you could screw it if you wanted to, um, I'll go ahead and take these guys off. They keep wanting to come off, so that way so I won't lose them. So, what can we put down in the holler? Down in the holler. I do like how they separated out. I almost want to do like just a thin um, layer of silicone. But let's uh, let's see. Let's see. What would be easy to put in here? All right. So I did this the last time when I was working on the Clum Shift, the X79, and I was pleasantly surprised because I very rarely use this, and it was just kind of sitting there. This is the zip and fit. So. Um, <clears throat> I got work to do, but I really want to do this. So instead of spending the time it would take to do a silicone pour, because really that was that or cutting out Noiko, which could take a bit because I'd really want to just make a template, you know, cut it out of place and then put it in. But I would have to do some taping off the tech connections and stuff. So it, it, either way, it would take a while. If I could just get some sip and fit, put it in there, make it fit, make it work, then I think I could just be done. So let's see what we can do with the super fit. All right, I think that's good enough there. Now let's see what we can do here. These JST cables are the ones that I've seen before on like mobile phones. So while I could take them apart and put them back together, I'd rather not have to go through that process. Um, I do want to add PE foam. I know on some boards it actually diminishes the sound, 
but I think in this situation, I could be wrong. I may come back and take it out. That's why I'm not going with the pads because it's a lot more work. And if I find out I don't like it, I'm to take them off and throw them away. Anyway, so I'm going to use PE foam. It looks like there's some screws to take off these uh, these plates. So I'm going to be very, very careful in this situation. And there we have just the PCB alone. Huh. Well, the PCBs, I should say, as they are split. So, if you own an Alice, technically you own a split keyboard that's permanently attached. But, um, hmm. so it's just a nice, clean PCB. Everything looks nicely traced and it just looks clean. Every solder joint looks really clean. Um, I've heard that there's VIA available for this. Uh, the only link I've seen is on one of the Chinese Baidu sharing websites and you need an account to even download. So I haven't been able to download it. If there is Becker files out there uh, and you know where they are, please share so I can share with the community. And I can also download it myself. I have yet to uh, try the software. All right, so obviously these we're going to keep, and we're going to keep the plates. Try to keep these in place so they're easier to put together. When I go back in, say you want some PE foam. I think I have some. We got some PE foam. Now, one thing, uh, there are different thicknesses of PE foam out there. Now, for the most part, keyboard manufacturers do ship out in this uh, type. I don't know that what they're called, the different levels. They probably just have grades. But if you have PE foam that you want to use for your keyboard, a basic rule of thumb, and this is my rule of thumb, I didn't hear it from anybody else, just that I, something that I've learned on my own. If you can't see your uh, hand through one layer of it, don't use it. It's, it's likely to cause issues, either bending your pins, um, not allowing proper connection or connecting, but also not quite connected. So you don't have chatter or you have keys that just randomly won't work. So as a rule of thumb, I try to always keep it to um, the thinnest. And I think that rule of thumb just it has always worked for me. I tried one time with some stuff. I was like, oh, it's thicker, so it should do better. It did nothing but a mess. Thankfully, I was lucky. I didn't destroy anything. I didn't create any permanent damage. But I definitely saw how using just slightly thicker, but, I mean, I couldn't see my hand through it. It was completely opaque because it was that thick. I was like, mm. but, you know, hey, we live and we learn, right? All right, so for this one, I'm just gonna roughly cut them out, put them back together, and then really you know, trim them up so that there's no um, no spare material to cause any issues. So, uh, here, let me see, make sure I get, hmm. I if I split that, that's not gonna go all the way across. So. Maybe I want to do it this way. No, I don't know if that will go all the way across with this. Oh, even if we have a little bit of hole, I think it will be okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut this piece off.
do need to make sure we have a clearing for the disconnector. Oh, okay, it's on the side, so I think we should be okay. I'm going to do a rough cut. this paper. That looks good. You can always trim it up a little bit more. Alright, so let's put this back together then. this over, so we're going to put this over. Oh, we need to cut out for the knob. spot that doesn't matter, which is good. Alright, so now we flip these over and put them on. And making sure that we're keeping everything in place and lining everything up. Careful and gentle, because like I said, we're, unless you disconnect the JST connectors, but even then, you still got to be gentle. We're dealing with fragile electronics here. Let's go ahead and clean up this PE phone. And now for tape. Now because of these, we're going to just stay away from here and we're going to start here and go out. I don't want to make any cuts to where the uh, JSD keys are, so I'm just going to amount of trimming to do. Alright, so let's see about setting her back in, making sure that everything fits. Oh, before I close this up, there's one more thing I want to put in here. I've been doing this lately. Um, I want to say Scott from keyboard, board, I come board, not my keyboard. Um, that 
did the polyfill, the first polyfill video I saw, and I was like, that really can't make that much difference. And I actually knew where there was a bag of polyfill in my house from crafting that my wife had done with her kids. And I was very surprised at the, basically it captures higher tone pitches and kind of, I guess, lets them just roam around inside of the phone. I don't know. But the deeper tones are allowed to escape. I don't have a scientific reason why. Uh, Scott Board and other people that know acoustics better have provided a lot of, there's a lot of information out there. And, I mean, I am, every video I do is only being done on the, you know, on the back of what I've learned from other YouTubers, um, as well as people in the community. So, uh, that's why I try to give credit. Uh, where I feel truly does not require that much. And... The nice thing about it that it is a sound dampener that still allows for flex. And since we've got some room, I mean, we've only added just a thin layer here. We're just gonna just put some wisps. I feel like Bob Ross when I'm doing this. Let's give, let's give the, the trees some leaves. Happy little trees, happy little trees. Well, we're doing happy polyfill, happy polyfill. So we can let all the most deep And if you guys don't know who I'm talking about when I say Bob Ross, you should. He's a meme now. But, yes, I grew up watching Bob Ross on TV. So, I mean, I'm sure most of you already know <laughs> I'm a, how old I am, or roughly how old, how old I am, if you spend any time in the subreddit. But, um, it's funny because I, I say sometimes, hey, that's a tip from your Uncle Mark. And a couple of people have been like, you mean your grandpa mark right <laughs> looks like this needs to go this way so almost wants me to plug it in like this very short all right i think we got it in there let's get it locked lost one to lost a couple of gaskets. So we got everything pretty much put back together, put the knob back on. Now we're going to load it instead of the uh, NK Olivia, the NK Silks, um, we're going to be putting in Fecker Holy Pandas. Now it's funny because it actually came with a sample of two. I think everyone except the JJK84 came with uh, every Fecker that I've purchased has come with uh, sample switches. But anyway, uh, it came with Fecker Holy Pandas. I like them. I have I have actually plenty of them. So I figured, you know, to get some sound out of them. Tactiles, usually uh, long stem ones like these are, uh, tend to do the trick. So I figured, let's give these a shot. So I'm going to go ahead and load these up. Then I'm going to go back to the Olivia set that I originally had picked. And we'll go with the sound test. Well, here she is, folks. Um, I think she sounds pretty good. She can sound better, but she sounds better than she did stock. And I really like this kit. I, um, I got a couple of little minor 
minor complaints. The gaskets, like I said, are the gasket socks for the plate. They either need hooks or something else that they stay on. I mean, obviously they need to be able to come off when necessary, but you need to also be able to stay on if you're just moving it. The, the below the wind make those gas gasket socks pop off. Um, the DIN cables, I mean, I understand, but they're a little fragile. Maybe there's a different way to do that. I don't know, but I mean, it's that's like that's not a necessary change. I would say it's just a minor complaint. Other than that, I do like how this board is built. I I like the space that it has inside of it. Um, like I said, I just did a quick one. Uh, I kind of copied a mod I just did on another keyboard. I did a very similar mod on the Klim Shift. Uh, though the sounds are different, um, I definitely think this one sounds better, but you tell me. Until the next transmission, keep calm, keyboard on.